<laughs> Hello, everybody. Wait, hear me if you can hear me. <laughs> oh, wonderful. So um, thank you again for coming. Um, this is Fred Steiner's Zoom program for the library. Um, we really appreciate it. It's a part of our summer program, which is pretty much completely digital this year, which is um, a fun new thing for the library, but it's been really great. Um, the program is called You'll Never Believe What's on the Bottom of the Buckeye, not to mention strange structures along the banks of the Riley Creek. Um, your microphones are going to be muted um, until the end. Please feel free to chat on the right side, as I said here. We'll ask, or you, feel free to ask your questions in the chat box and we'll answer them in order. Um, please keep them brief because we're going to try to keep them within Zoom's allotted time here. And um, I also sent you all a link with pictures that go along with Fred's talk. So he'll reference like photo one, photo two. And um, if you want to open up LuptonPublicLibrary.org slash Fred's photos, no um, apostrophe, that will open up and you'll have access to all those photos. I'm going to try to do some screen sharing too on my side, but um, depending on the view that you have, it might be pretty small because my box is pretty small here. So. <laughs> um, please notice that the program is being recorded right now. So um, that's going to be uploaded to the library's website. Um, we will upload to YouTube and then um, embed it on our website under our summer program. Um, I encourage you to share video. Thank you for everyone that's sharing video. Um, it's good to see your faces. And again, microphones are muted, so um, we will be unable to hear you unless we have extra time at the end. Thank you again so much. Um, and Fred's talk connects the role that several quarries and Riley Creek have played affecting life in our community over several decades. He is hoping to release a book titled Bluffton Anthology, A Creek Runs Through It, later this fall. I hope the library will be able to put it on our shelves. <laughs> the book includes many short essays from several area writers about growing up in Bluffton. All righty, so take it away, Fred. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thanks for joining me. Um, so what's at the bottom of the Buckeye? And uh, where did people swim in Bluffton uh, one century ago? What is Cigarette Creek and how did it get its name? We're going to take a trip down the Riley and uh, visit some Bluffton watering holes and answer some of those questions. For starters, let's go back 100 years ago and in, in the 1920s, uh, you may not be aware that the railroad that goes through Bluffton at that time ended in Sandusky at Cedar Point. And that uh, what happened is that there were railroad excursions from Bluffton to Cedar Point. You could buy a ticket. The train would come to Bluffton, stop at the station. You'd get on. It'd take you right to Cedar Point. You could spend the day there. Cedar Point at that time was a beach on Lake Erie, but it was also some car uh, carousel rides. And, you know, obviously it wasn't what it is today, but it was a lot of fun. When, when the day was done, you got back on the train, it came back to Bluffton and left you off. Now, how cool is that? We can't do that today, but my mother did it uh, in the 1920s. Um, so that's kind of a water story, but uh, let, let's get into some, some more interesting uh, uh, Bluffton water things. There, were, there have been five swimming pools in Bluffton in the past 100 years. Um, the first one, and, and you'll see that in photos one, two, three, and four, were, uh, that, was a, that was in Riley Creek between Harmon Field and, the, and uh, Steinmetz Field. Bob Scheiblin, who was a Bluffton High School and Bluffton College grad, told me about this. I think he was a lifeguard, if you can call him a lifeguard. Um, there's uh, remains of a dam, not much of it's left, but the dam is there. There are also uh, very uh, ornate um, wa um, 
wall. Uh, there's a wall on one side. It's in very good condition. In photo three, it's in really poor condition. That's on the uh, soccer field side. And then in photo four, you can see it from uh, a, an airplane view taken in the 1950s. So you can see where that arrow's pointing to. That's actually the dam. And that behind that was where people would swim, um, which is kind of a neat uh, thing. And uh, it doesn't look like that today. There are a lot more trees, a lot more brush. If you look at that and say, how did they do it? It was a lot cleaner in the 20s. So that was, that was really um, the first place people swam. Then let's go to the Buckeye. On the Spring Street side of the Buckeye in the 20s was this structure. And you're looking at it from the Riley Creek Bank, looking toward the, what would be the shelter house area, a little uh, closer to the, to the street. Um, you're looking at a diving board, a slide, a sort of bathhouse. The man on the uh, standing on the deck is a Steiner Geiger, Bluffton High School graduate, Bluffton College graduate, World War I veteran. He became a uh, school administrator. He taught people to swim. His sister, Mabel, is probably standing on the diving board. Um, here's how it worked. There, uh, the Buckeye is a quarry, it was a quarry, and at the Spring Street end, you can wade in. It's very shallow, and then it drops off. There was a wire or a rope that divided the drop-off section so that uh, kids could be in the wade-in area, and then on the other side of the wire is where adults or, or swimmers could, could actually swim. Uh, my mother tells me or told me that uh, she she learned to swim there. Uh, Steiner Geiger tied a rope around your waist, tossed you in the Buckeye, and you swam back to shore. It worked, um, but that's that's how that's how that was all about. Uh, it's a very interesting um, thing when you think about it. So. Um, then in the 30s, something else took place, which is really kind of neat, and you'll see on photos five, six, and seven, I believe, um, a floating pool. And that pool was in, created and installed on the Main Street side of the Buckeye. Um, you'll see by looking at the pictures that it was uh, pretty large. Um, it had some seating around the edge, it had more than one uh, depth. I'm not sure if it had two or more, but, um, and how did it keep afloat? It kept afloat by large oil drums that were attached on the bottom, and it was basically a raft. This uh, structure was in, uh, there, here's, here's what might have been a builder's photo. Um, uh, it was in the Buckeye in the late 30s. Chuck Hildy said that he was in it as a four-year-old, um, and he was born in 1934, uh, in the 1940s, and then in the very early 1950s. Um, it uh, was in pretty bad shape by the 1950s. I have one memory of it. It's either real or imagined. I'm not sure which, but I think as a pre- preschooler, I, I remember, I think I remember getting a splinter. So it was pretty bad by, by then. Okay, so what do you suppose they did with it? They took it out in the center of the Buckeye and sunk it. And there it lies today at the bottom of the Buckeye. Believe it or not, um, my cousin Doug Hahn said that uh, in, in, clearer, in a clearer era, you could see it on clear days. I've never seen it. Um, he said that there were a lot of fishing lures hooked onto it. Uh, Rob Strom in the 70s did some scuba diving and he went down and saw it. So, uh, you know, there's, and he said, he said there was a, a very large carp sitting below on the bottom. So it's, it's kind of like the Bluffton's Titanic, 
There it is. It's on the bottom. Um, there are other things in the bottom of the Buckeye, in addition to the floating pool. In the uh, 1910s, the Buckeye was used as, uh, as a place to obtain um, ice for ice houses. And a tragic story is that uh, a team of horses was on the Buckeye and fell through the ice and drowned. I don't think the skeletons of the horses are there, but the apparently the wagon is still on, on the floor of the Buckeye. There are probably a lot of class rings on the Buckeye, in the Buckeye, and my wife says her third grade eyeglasses are down there somewhere. So there's a lot of things. If, if we drained the Buckeye, it'd be pretty interesting. You can also see that, just one more thing on the floating pool, you can see the picture. Um, it was really pretty large uh, as, as, you, as you look at that. It, it, it just seems to me such an impossible thing. So let's go to the next pool, the one that many of us know, and that is the, uh, those color photographs, five, six, Let's see, um, yeah, eight and nine. Paul Diller took these photos. These were originally uh, sl color slides. This pool was constructed uh, about 1955. Um, it included a wading pool for uh, babies. Uh, maybe it was three feet at the most. It was always pretty warm in it. Um, it was also a rectangular pool, which you can now see. Uh, that went from three feet to six feet. It had three um, lifeguard chairs. The neat thing about this pool was that it had a stairways, stair steps down to the Buckeye. And you can see that there was a large cement deck on the Buckeye and you could um, swim in the Buckeye if you took the, uh, the test, the swimming test. And that was sort of a, a rite of summer. If you, if you could pass this, the swim test, you had made it in Bluffton. Um, and here's how it worked. You uh, told the lifeguard you were ready to take the test. The lifeguard accompanied you out to the end of the ropes and then back in. If you could do it, you could swim in the Buckeye. The Buckeye had three um, diving boards, a low, medium, and high. The medium was sort of uh, close to what it would be today at the pool. The high dive was, I I'd say it was on the, sec on the second floor of a building. If the, if the, I, I don't know the height, but Paul, I'm convinced he's standing on the high dive when he took that photo, so you can you can kind of see get an idea of the of the uh, that's the medium dive right there. Uh, and there's also a raft. I'm kind of bouncing around, but there's there's a raft. Anyway, the uh, high dive. Let's go back to the high dive. Not everybody uh, took the high dive, but but you could, and it would uh, you could go pretty deep in that and feel the water temperature change it would be kind of cold on on that there were there was one raft first of all then a second raft was uh constructed so you could uh, sit out on the raft and later they added a slide slide was uh, i'm get, i'm saying that it was very similar to the height of the slide today except for one thing it went straight down so you could uh gain a lot of speed. Interesting thing that you could also wear out and it, if you were looking in the, that photo right there, the slide would be um, on, that, uh, on that deck area. That's where it was. Um, it, uh, you, a lot of swimsuits were uh, lost on that slide because there was a, an overlap that, uh, you know, that's the way it happened. But that was just part of the fun, I guess. Um, the, uh, oh, Bluffton Sardines Swim Team. How do you suppose it got its name? It got its name when uh, Ray Rugley and uh, Ron Motter were the swim coaches. And they were, the swim team 
uh, swim meets were in that rectangular pool and it was so crowded that they jokingly called themselves the sardines and it was a complimentary term and that's how the Bluffton sardines got got its name um, from that swimming pool so it's um, just kind of a something to um, remember I guess uh, and they did have swim meets in that pool the uh, Let's take a little walk down the Riley, Riley Creek now at this point. Um, starting near the village park, if, uh, if we started walking, well, let, let's, let's do it this way. There's a stream that goes through the village park that's not, the, not Riley Creek. You've seen it, but you just never really gave it much thought. That is Cigarette Creek. And according to Bob Kreider, that's where young adolescent boys in the 1920s went out and smoked cigarettes. It's on a plat map somewhere, I've seen it. It says Cigarette Creek, so it's an official name, although I don't think anybody today knows that that's what it's called. Um, but, so how did they get there? I think they got there two ways. One is, they must have walked out County Line Road. That was a, the park was a farm. And somehow they just walked the stream, which was very shallow, uh, all the way to the creek. The other way you can find it is if you take the triplet bike path from East College Avenue all the way to the Village Park. When you get under the overpass and onto the Village Park, that's where Cigarette Creek dumps into the, the Riley. So there you go, that's, that's Cigarette Creek. Uh, must have been a, a really awful place at one time. You just can't imagine. Um, if you walked further onto Orange Township with Riley Creek going the other way out of town, you will eventually come to Big Rock. And if you've never seen, I don't have a photo of Big Rock here, but if you've never seen it, it's worth your, worth your while. It's uh, a, an enormous rock that was brought down from the glacier from Canada and uh, landed where it landed. Um, it's large enough that it would, it might take a ladder to get on top. If someone was there to help you, they could push you up and, and uh, three, four, five people could sit on it. Uh, it's a it's it's a pretty interesting piece. There was also at one time a sulfur spring in Riley Creek, uh, in the area of uh, this Orange Township area. I don't know if it's there anymore, but I I saw it. I smelled it. A lot of people did. It was just kind of a, it might have been an artesian well that just came into the creek area, but it had a strong sulfur smell to it. Uh, let's walk down, let's go back into Bluffton now and walk down the stream. Uh, let's, let's end up at uh, ch the Cherry Street Bridge. Uh, there was the village in the 1890s blocked the stream off and built a uh, reservoir for water for the fire department. Uh, so there is a, a, a large area, at least five feet deep. And then, of course, we've all forgotten about it. And that was forgotten about until about the 1980s when uh, the town hired someone to take a, uh, in, in all their wisdom, to take a, uh, uh, a tractor and clean out the creek, hoping that it would help the stream uh, f flow through Bluffton. And wouldn't you know, the tractor fell into the pit. Um, maybe they covered it up, I don't know. There probably are other fire pits like that that we just don't know about. So uh, a walk down Riley Creek would be, could be a, a real interesting adventure. Uh, going to Little Riley, and I'm going to just explain that there's two Riley Creeks. There's a, uh, a Little Riley and a Big Riley. The, We've been talking about the Big Riley. The Little Riley is the stream that goes through campus. Um, I live sort of near it. Rob Young lives uh, on the Little Riley. Um, 
there's two interesting things there and you can see the in photos 11 and 12 I'm going to call them mysterious steps. Um, what, here's, uh, uh, here you go. This is one, and uh, Rob Triplett's dad had this constructed in the late 1930s. Uh, it's really an interesting structure, and I cleaned it out this spring, so if you take a walk down Campus Drive, you can, uh, you can walk down there and go right to the bank, river bank, or creek bank. Um, the next structure is a little smaller and it's more on the uh, ne next what would be J.D. Yoder's house. It's closer there but uh, and I, I don't know if uh, let's see uh, Mr. Fett lived there at the time. I don't know if the Fetts built this one or if R.L. Triplett built them both but they both go down to the creek. Um, this one's not as in good shape but it's it's a very interesting uh, uh, structure. You can see a lot of wildlife down there. There's a, a frog that hangs out down there and some other things. Um, one more th structure, uh, there's a picture, the, uh, the final picture, actually it might have been number nine, I'm not sure. Yeah, that right there. Okay, that's, uh, that picture was taken in 1961. It is a lime kiln and it is on near Thurman Street, it's between Thurman Street and the National Quarry, right where Thurman Street takes its bend toward Main Street. If you were able to walk over the bank, that's where it would be. You won't see that much because uh, it's not it's not uh, as large today. I was there in the 1980s, and it was I'm going to say it was about half the size at that time. Um, I went by there yesterday hoping to walk down, but there are way too many, uh, it's, it's, there's too many shrubs and brushes. Uh, you, it's hard to get down there. You could do it from the creek. You could walk down the creek and maybe see something. But this structure really goes back to the days of Shannon, Ohio, as a lime kiln, which created soap, and there was a... Uh, uh, some type of a water uh, mill there to uh, do some other things. Um, but it's kind of a neat, a neat uh, structure and we don't know much about it. So that's, uh, oh, and what, just a oh, final thought here on Riley Creek. Um, we are 40 feet above sea level. We're 40 feet higher than Pandora above sea level. And Riley Creek flows to Pandora. So the stream falls about five feet a mile, which is not really very much at all. So we are really on flat land. And uh, of course, we all know that when it floods the, in 24 hours, it's going to end up in Finley. Um, but that's an entirely uh, different story. Um, so, so there are a lot of other things about the creek. There's some other quarries between here and Pandora that you might fall in if you don't know where you're at. Um, I'll stop at that point and say that um, uh, that's, that's my uh, take on uh, water in Bluffton. Um, once upon a time, you could say, if this is heaven, why does the water taste so bad? You can't say that anymore because we don't drink our own water. We drink Ottawa water, which actually flows through Bluffton to Ottawa, is pumped back to Bluffton and we pay for it. Now that's an entirely different story altogether. Okay, thanks a lot for listening and uh, I hope this, uh, hope you learned some things from this. <laughs> Righty. Any questions? Got some thanks in the, the chat. Thank you, Fred. Sure. <laughs> While people are waiting, I'll tell you that I never took the quarry test. I was uh, <laughs> booted out of the pool by Steve Sudemeister, and he said, Steiner, get in the quarry. That was my quarry test. I was just, uh, I think I drove him crazy. But I know that many of you that I'm looking at took that test, and I'd love to hear your stories about it, if you care to tell us. 
I see James Spanabecker. I know he's got a he's got a Corey test story. Uh, he's not going to say. Maybe he is. <laughs> it's like someone asked if Rob Paul is named after Rob Triplett. Uh, no, it is not. Oh. It's, it's, it's named after a family whose last name was Rob. Hmm. Yeah. I lived in Rob for two years. Okay. For no, three years. <laughs> Um, was the floating pool a frame for quarry water? Um, that is from Lindsay. I don't know if it was just, it was, it was a necessary, it was a need. Um, they needed a, they needed a swimming pool. And so somehow or another, it was decided that it was going to be a, a floating pool. And that's what happened. I, if if the library uh, was open and I could go down to the uh, Bluffton News pages, I'd find it. I think. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's it's there somewhere. If you give me a location of where it is, I can make sure I can find okay. it. Okay. Well, the thing <laughs> is that, I don't know what year it would be. It would be in the thirties. I oh wow well, yeah certainly be on the front page. <laughs> yeah. um, what was required to pass the swimming test? Um, you needed to uh, tell the lifeguard you were ready to take the test and swim from the from the deck to the edge of the ropes. And I always thought the ropes went out further and further every year, but that was probably my imagination. Um, uh, and then when you got out there, you could take a break, a breather, and then swim back to the deck. And that was your test. And Rob Young's uh, shaking, he said, yes, yeah, so he must have taken it. <laughs> um, um, I want the, go ahead. Here's another question um, from Rob. I once heard the steps were a WPA project. Are there any WPA projects in Bluffton? That's a good, that's a good I, don't, I don't know about that. that that's a good question. Um, the uh, the uh, post office has some WPA uh, history to it. The, uh, the mural in the post office is connected some way. I'm not it's not directly to that. It's there was another program, um, and uh, Harmon Field was not a WPA project. It was a uh, something a little earlier than that um, by a, a Harmon Foundation. Um, WPA projects. There certainly there certainly was something I. At the moment, I'm I'm lost on that one. Had to be. Uh, Bluffton, yeah, don't know. Well, you're a very polite crowd, and I <laughs> appreciate. Barb, or Barb has a question. Maybe I'll. I don't think she has the chat up. I'll I'll unmute her here so okay. she can ask it. There are some stories in the chat box as well about people taking. Um, oh, good, chat. good. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Okay. okay, I have asked. To unmute, Barb. Is it letting you? <laughs> yes, okay. Is that it? Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay. So just a quarry story. Uh, we didn't have to swim to the ropes. We only had to swim to the floating um, island. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, that was scary enough, but that's what <laughs> we did in 1959. Okay. <laughs> and then the, about 1960, um, bunch of high school girls we went to the pool and um joe urich was there and so he was showing off on the highest diving board and we were swooning with admiration because he could do a jackknife perfectly oh. and he loved to practice <laughs> and we loved to watch okay <laughs> so that would i graduated one. one so that would have been about 60 61 <laughs> I think all I could do is the cannonball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Fred. Sure. That was 
Interesting. So, Appreciate it. All right. Um, do you see the chat here, Fred? Would you like to respond to some of the chat, or should I unmute uh, some people? Uh, or? Go ahead and unmute. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll unmute people here. Fine. I'm still waiting for James Panabecker's uh, story. I, I know he's got one. <laughs> <laughs> my father my father gave me the test he did oh I, whoever lifeguard was Warren Eastman or not Warren uh, Cliff Cliff Eastman gave him permission to swim alongside me and we went to the ropes and back how old were you what grade two it, two okay second grade <laughs> no, I think I was four years old. Four. No, thank you. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Rob, did you ever take the test? Oh, yeah. I think we swam to the ropes. Who and gave back. it to you? Oh, a lifeguard. I don't okay. know. Okay, you know? Okay. No. <laughs> No, I only remember doing one year. Did you have to re up every year? I don't think so. I, I okay, see some heads nodding. No, since I just got booted out of the pool, I don't you know that was just it. Then and they, they made you quite anxious about it. It was, it was an accomplishment, mm -hmm. right. <laughs> But uh, as you look at the Buckeye, you'll see a little bit, of, just a little bit of the deck remaining. Um, I, do you think the Buckeye was as muddy then as it is now? It just seems like it was a lot clearer. Or is that just my imagination? It used to turn over a couple of times every summer. So it'd get these, this like leaf color cover and then it'd flip, and it was real clear for a while again. Had to do something with the rain, I don't know. Okay, all right. It, it is uh, fed by a, uh, an underwater uh, stream, so it, it, that's where it uh, gets its water. Um, there, are, uh, there are snakes in the Buckeye. Every once in a while, the Lang brothers would catch some and uh, you know, show off their, that, that would be another uh, thing that you could brag about if you caught a snake. <laughs> they were pretty harmless, I think. The real you, test was to see if you could swim to the ropes and back underwater. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I don't even know if I wanted to duck my head underwater, but that's... <laughs> And of course, Ron Motter claimed that there was a monster under one of the rafts. So that always kept a lot of uh, people, uh, a lot of younger kids. Uh, didn't stop us. <laughs> well, maybe he didn't tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. Thanks, Lauren, for inviting me. And, uh, Thank you. Yeah, it looks like we're just about ready to, okay. Zoom's going to kick us off here. Thank right, you great. again. The, the library really appreciates you doing this for us. Right. And I saw somebody said that um, it'd be a wonderful regular program, Stories of Lufton with Fred. So okay. the, the library's on yeah. board for that if you'd like to. Okay. Right. <laughs> Maybe we should have a swim in the Buckeye Day just one time. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> All right. I don't know. I've seen some of those snakes you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. Thank you, everybody. Hey, thanks a lot for listening. See you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Bye now.